Before the age of two, he underwent multiple surgeries to remove a benign mass in his left eye that left his eye nearly closed shut. He fell in love with the game at a young age and was already dominating hitters as early as eight years old. At just 16, the young pitching phenom out of Culiacan, Mexico, signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He quickly rose through the ranks of the Dodgers farm system to become the top pitching prospect in all of baseball. He made his way back from a shoulder surgery that kept him off the mound for over a year. In 2019, he was suspended 20 games under Major League Baseball's joint domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy. The following year, he put together one of the most dominating postseason runs in baseball history to help the Dodgers end their 32-year World Series drought. He then would establish himself as the Uri Ace and finish in the top three in the Cy Young voting and even received MVP votes in 2022. He was named the Dodgers opening day starter in 2023 and with a solid season would have set himself up for a 200 plus million dollar payday. But it all came crashing down one night at a soccer game in LA where he was arrested for felony domestic violence charges that have left his future in doubt with no sign of a return to the mound anytime soon. This is a story of how an ace fell from Grace, the rise and fall of Julio Arias. Julio Urias was born on August 12, 1996 in Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. His father, Carlos Urias, worked as a janitor at a local school, which afforded him time after school to coach Julio's teams and do whatever he could to help him develop as a baseball player. But before Julio could dedicate most of his time to the game he loved, he had to undergo multiple surgeries at a very young age to address a very rare condition to his left eye that left him nearly blind. Before the age of two, he underwent multiple surgeries to remove a benign mass in his left eye that left his left eye nearly closed shut. Julio's father, Carlos Arias, said, I was paid very little, and also because of his eye, we had to take him to the doctors constantly, so it was very hard to make ends meet. Now, a few years ago, Jorge Castillo of the LA Times, he did a story on Julio Arias, and he wrote, Julio's grandfather owned the nine-person household's only car, so Julio and his father would take a 12-hour bus ride to Guadalajara for surgeries whenever the eye was sealing shut. Doctors tied his hands down after surgery so he wouldn't remove the patch or the IV in his arm. He was prescribed medication to hinder the tumor's growth. Carlos estimated Julio underwent 10 surgeries by the time he was 10. He go on to say, doctors initially couldn't identify the issue until they diagnosed Julio with a tumor when he was four. Tess found it was benign, but doctors told the family the tumor would aggressively grow through his teenage years and removing it would risk compromising Julio's eye. Repeated, less invasive surgeries would be required to keep the eye open. Now, Julio has often said, God gave me a bad left eye and a good left arm. And thanks to these surgeries, he was able to play baseball and continue to pursue that dream. Now, Julio's love of baseball came at a very young age. He was already playing by the age of five. And by the age of eight, he was already pitching in championship games. And he was on the verge of pitching his first career perfect game when his cousin, Claycito, as they called him, stepped in the box to face Julio with a chance to not only break up his perfect game, but win the championship for his team. Claycito was the last hitter on the team that you would expect to get a hit off Julio, and Julio thought he would easily dominate his cousin, so he gave him a heater down the pipe, and Claycito got a base hit to break up a perfect game. Julio's team would go on to lose that game and the championship, and it would turn out to be the only championship that Julio would lose for the next six seasons. He was already pitching for the Mexican national team when he was 10 years old, and up until he was 14, he didn't lose one championship after that. All Julio's ever known is winning baseball games. Julio said, I threw so many no hitters and so many perfect games and won so many championships, but that's what sticks with me. 
So that tells you, Julio is a fiery competitor, still talking about a game that he lost when he was eight years old. Julio would continue to refine his skills on the mound, and it was only a matter of time before he got discovered by a big league team. Fast forward to June of 2012, when a trio of Dodgers scouts, including the legendary Mike Brito, along with Logan White and Paul Fryer, ventured to Mexico City, where they got their first glimpse at the highly coveted Cuban free agent that had freshly been defected, named Yasiel Puig. After laying the groundwork with the Wild Horse, LA scouts made their way to Diablos Rojos del Mexico Baseball Academy in Oaxaca to take a look at a young catching prospect named Julian Leone. They would eventually sign Leon a month later, and he would end up in the Angels system. Leon never made it to the show. While scouting Leon, they noticed a young left-handed pitcher with an impressive left arm and a swollen left eye, where the lid was almost completely shut. Former Dodgers scout Logan White told Bleacher Report back in 2016, you didn't know if he could see out of it. You didn't know if he had cancer. Normal scout rumors that when something comes up, they think the worst. To this day, he's still one of the best 15-year-olds I've ever seen. Now, this was really perfect timing for the Dodgers because not only through a chance of fate did they identify the talent of Julio Arias, but because of the ownership change taking place at the time, they actually had the money to be able to sign him. And that's because on May 1st, 2012, Dodgers owner Frank McCourt finally decided to sell the team. Now, the Dodgers were in the dumps financially. They were cash-strapped. They had totally abandoned international spending. There was a time when Dodgers players feared that they weren't going to get their game checks. And that's because Frank McCourt was running the team into the ground. And during McCourt's ownership of the team, LA scaled back on their international signings, leaving the Dodgers scouts with little to no money to spend on the international market. That changed overnight when the Guggenheim Group bought the team for over $2 billion and encouraged Dodgers scouts to spend money on international prospects. So this opened the door for Julio Urias to sign with LA. The Dodgers general manager at the time, Ned Coletti said, it changed the franchise. We were very dormant in Latin America. The Dodgers were one of the pioneers in Latin America, and yet we were on the sidelines. That June, the Dodgers would sign four players, Yasiel Puig, Leon, their first round pick, Corey Seager, and then on his birthday on August 12th, they signed the 16-year-old Julio Urias. And Julio would make his way through the Dodgers farm system and eventually would become the top pitching prospect in all of Major League Baseball. Julio made light work of his time in the minors, owning a 1.10 ERA with AAA Oklahoma City, where at one point he was riding a 27-inning scoreless streak. Then on May 27, 2016, Julio made his big league debut in the Big Apple against the New York Mets. Heading into his first career start at 19 years, 289 days, Julio became the youngest Dodgers pitcher to start a game since Dick Kalmus 53 years ago in 1963. Julio's debut was a rocky one where he allowed three runs and four walks in two and two-thirds innings of work and needed 81 pitches to get eight outs. His next start was even shakier, where he gave up six runs in five innings, including three home runs in the Dodgers' 7-2 loss to the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Julio would turn it around, though. Julio gave up more than three runs just once and more than two runs just three times for the remainder of the season and finished his first taste of big league action with a 2.73 ERA with 77 strikeouts in his remaining 69 and a third innings of work. After giving up three home runs to the Cubs, he only served up two dingers for the rest of the regular season. Julio secured his spot on the Dodgers postseason roster, where he became the youngest pitcher in baseball history to record a win in a postseason game. Then he made more history in the NLCS against the Cubs, where he became the youngest pitcher to start a postseason game. In that Game 4 matchup with the Cubs, Julio gave up four runs and couldn't get past the fourth inning, and the Dodgers would go on to lose that game and that series. But even with some ups and downs, all in all, Julio's first season pitching in the show was a success. Success. He posted a 3.39 ERA, a 3.17 FIP in 18 games. He made 15 starts, had 84 strikeouts, and had 31.
31 walks in 77 innings of work. Now, heading into the 2017 season, there was a lot of hype surrounding Julio, and the big question was, would he take the next big step in his development? Well, unfortunately, he took a big step back. He struggled in his brief action that year, but he did have his best career start in early May against the Pittsburgh Pirates, where he took a no-hitter into the seventh inning. He exited the game after giving up a ground rule double to Andrew McCutcheon, but it turned out to be the longest start of his career at six and a third innings pitched. But unfortunately, 2017 turned out to be a lost season for Julio after he went down with his shoulder injury. And on June 27th, he underwent left anterior capsule surgery on his shoulder with the expected rehab to be around 12 to 14 months. On the year, he posted a 540 ERA in five starts, had 14 walks and 11 strikeouts in 23 and a third innings of work. Then in 2018, Julio battled his way back from the shoulder injury and on July 30th started his rehab assignment. He had his ups and downs in the minors, giving up seven runs in 11 and two-thirds innings, but was brought up in mid-September for three games where he tossed four scoreless innings. Julio was added to the NLCS roster versus the Brewers and eventually the World Series roster versus the Red Sox. He gave a solo home run to Jesus Aguilar in Game 1 that turned out to be the game-winning run there, but otherwise he pitched very well. Julio would pitch in seven postseason games that year, four in the NLCS and three in the World Series, giving up two runs in six and a third innings. And then in 2019, with Clayton Kershaw and Rich Hill on the IL to start the year, Julio made the opening day roster and would eventually be used as a bullpen swingman. Julio posted a 2.49 ERA in 37 games in 2019, starting eight games. In those eight starts, he posted a 3.26 ERA and was starting to flash that potential where it looked like he was starting to emerge as the ace that we all expected him to be. But unfortunately, it was during that year that he had his first incident involving domestic violence. On May 13th at the Beverly Center, a shopping mall in Los Angeles, police were notified to the Beverly Center parking garage and Julio was arrested on suspicion of misdemeanor domestic battery and was released on bail later that night. Julio was immediately placed on administrative leave and later Major League Baseball announced that it had concluded its investigation and suspended Urias for 20 games for violating baseball's domestic violence, sexual assault and child abuse policy. Urias missed five games while on administrative leave in May. Julio said in a statement, Although the authorities determined no charges of any kind were warranted, I accept full responsibility for what I believe was my inappropriate conduct during the incident. Even in this instance where there was no injury or history of violence, I understand and agree that Major League players should be held to a higher standard. I hold myself to a higher standard as well. I have taken proactive steps to help me grow as a person on and off the field and in my relationships, including attending counseling sessions. Part of the agreement for the next year was that Julio had to maintain a clean record, attend a hearing with the city attorney, and complete a 52-week domestic violence counseling program. Years later, he told the LA Times about the incident. It was difficult. I don't even like to talk about it or remember it because they're very complicated moments in life that you don't want to see yourself or another person in that situation. It was a lesson, and I feel like if I have a stain, it's that one. According to TMZ, witnesses reported the 22-year-old pitcher was arguing with the woman he was with, then shoved her in the parking lot of the mall, but the woman denied it. Urias was arrested for a misdemeanor, posted $20,000 bail, and was released. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts spoke to reporters before Tuesday's game. I don't know the facts, and so right now, um, I think I'm very obviously... Uh, choosing my words wisely and very hesitant to, until we learn more. The Dodgers say every allegation of domestic violence must be taken seriously and addressed promptly, and we will cooperate fully with the authorities and Major League Baseball to ensure that happens in this case. And then in 2020, Julio went from a potential star to a Dodgers postseason legend. It was all about October for Julio that year as he helped lead the Dodgers to their first World Series in 32 years. It all started in the wild card series against the Brewers where Julio pitched three scoreless frames coming out of the bullpen in game one. 
Then in game three of the NLDS against the Padres, Julio served as the Dodgers' bulk reliever and tossed five scoreless innings in the game three clincher to send the Dodgers to the NLCS. After the Dodgers were able to claw their way back from a 3-1 series deficit to force game seven, LA turned to their Urias out of the pen to close it out. Julio absolutely shut down the potent Braves lineup, pitching three perfect innings to clinch the NL pennant and lead the Dodgers back to the World Series. Julio would get the start in Game 4, and he pitched very well. He had nine strikeouts and left the game with a lead in a game where the Dodgers would unfortunately lose. Then in Game 6, with the Dodgers up three games to two in the series, holding on to a 2-1 to lead in the seventh, LA put their World Series hopes in the left hand of Julio Urias once again. Julio entered the game with two outs in the seventh and would retire all seven batters he faced and struck out Willie Adamas to win the Dodgers first World Series title in 32 years. And strike three! Dodgers have won it all in 2020! Through his legendary postseason run, Julio posted a microscopic 1.17 ERA with 29 strikeouts to just four walks in 23 postseason innings. Julio had won the hearts of Dodgers fans everywhere. He was truly emerging as an iconic Dodger. With murals around town, he was the indelible image of the Dodgers' 2020 postseason run. And it was starting to feel like Julio was the extension of Fernando Valenzuela and what he built in the 80s. And it felt like he would finish his career in Los Angeles with how beloved he was by Dodgers fans and how important he was to this community. There was a special bond between Julio and this fan base. And this year at Fan Fest, I asked Julio about that special relationship he had with Dodgers fans, and here's what he told me. And Julio, you really become an icon here in Los Angeles. Talk about what that means to you and your relationship with the city. Um, ya te sientes como un superestrella en este en esta ciudad. ¿Cómo significa para ti ser tan grande como tú en Los Ángeles? No, desde el día uno, la verdad que me siento identificado con la fanaticada. Como siempre lo he dicho, para mí es México. Lanzar aquí es estar, es estar en México y, y es un es un gran orgullo poder representarlos a ellos. Obviamente como Fernando lo hizo con con todos nosotros. Entonces contento de, de estar aquí con todos ellos. Yeah, it's always been an incredible blessing, like I said, from day one. It always feels like I'm pitching in, in the city of Mexico. I have such a fan base, such support. Be able to follow someone like Fernando, it, it's been such a blessing to be here. Then in 2021, the bubble wrap finally came all the way off. The command of his curveball and his changeup improved tremendously, giving Julio three above average offerings to go along with his high spin fastball. The biggest difference for Julio was his increased ability to find the strike zone. His 70.7 first pitch strike percentage and his 69.8 overall strike percentage led all of Major League Baseball. Julio allowed three or fewer runs in 26 of his career high 32 starts and posted the highest strikeout and lowest walk rates of his career. He was also going deeper into games, pitching at least six frames 15 times and going seven, seven times. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to replicate the postseason heroics that we saw in 2020. In the 2021 postseason, he posted a 540 ERA in 15 innings of work. He pitched well in the Giants series where he came out of the bullpen and went four innings and allowed one run in the clincher in Game 5. But in the 2021 NLCS against the Braves, Julio wasn't at his best. He was used out of the bullpen in Game 2 where he gave up two runs in the Dodgers' loss. And then in Game 4, he allowed five runs and five innings of work and served up three home runs. At that point, it was clear that Julio had ran out of gas. And then in 2022, Urias led the National League with a 194 ERA plus and a career high 216 ERA. He finished second in wins with 17. He was third in whip at .931 and batting average allowed at 199. He received MVP votes that season and finished with a 216 ERA, a 371 FIP, a sub one whip with 166 strikeouts and 175 innings of work and finished with the third most Cy Young votes in the National League. And then heading into the 2023 season, most expected Julio to have a signature year and set himself up for a $200 plus million dollar payday. He was under his final year of team control with the Dodgers, and when you consider his 
age and his production, had he had just a normal Julio Urias year, he would have set himself up for long-term generational wealth and would have easily become one of the highest paid pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. Julio received the honor of being named the Dodgers opening day starter and he pitched well in a Dodgers 8-2 win over the Diamondbacks on March 30th where he went six innings, allowed no runs, had six strikeouts and no walks. It looked like he was primed to have a big year. Unfortunately, it was everything but and he had the worst year of his professional career, not only on the mound but off the field. Julio had the highest ERA, 460, and expected ERA, 479, of his career outside of the 2017 season where he suffered the shoulder injury. On May 18th against the Cardinals, he gave up four home runs in one inning. It was the first time a Dodgers pitcher had done that since Ben Wade in 1954. Julio was tied for the MLB lead in home runs allowed at that point with 14, and he would go on to have rough outing after rough outing, eventually culminating in the worst start of his professional career against the Baltimore Orioles on July 19th, where he gave up a career-worst eight runs. Then in August, he gave up six runs to the Red Sox in Fenway and then followed that up by giving up five runs in five innings to the Braves at Dodger Stadium. In both those games, he gave up three home runs. Something clearly wasn't right with Julio on the mound, and it got even worse off the field. On September 4th, Julio Urias was arrested on felony domestic violence charges. Julio was in attendance for the much-anticipated LAFC vs. Inter-Miami soccer match that was the hottest ticket in Los Angeles thanks to the best soccer player of all time playing in the match, Lionel Messi. There was tons of celebrities in the house, including Selena Gomez, Prince Harry, and Leonardo DiCaprio. But it was after the match that the incident occurred. TMZ Sports reported that law enforcement officials filed that Urias came up from behind a woman, put his arm around her, and slammed her into a fence, pulling her hair. TMZ also reported that the woman had strangulation marks on her neck and that Urias apparently swung at her, although it is not clear if he made contact. And then Jeff Passan at ESPN reported Urias, 27, was arrested just after 11 p.m. Pacific time and booked into jail around 1 a.m., according to jail records. He was released on a $50,000 bond at 4.47 a.m. and has a court date scheduled for September 27th. The Dodgers quickly released a statement the next day that read, We are aware of an incident involving Julio Urias. While we attempt to learn all the facts, he will not be traveling with the team. The organization has no further comment at this time. But the Dodgers, they spoke with their actions and quickly distanced themselves from Julio. They covered his murals around the stadium. They emptied and changed his locker. And it was clear that they realized that he had pitched his last game in Dodger Blue. Now, to date, Major League Baseball hasn't issued a suspension for Julio Urias and will at some point meet with him and come to a conclusion with what his punishment will be. Now, it's important to note that to date, no player has been suspended twice under Major League Baseball's joint domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy, which has been in place since 2015. So this is unprecedented for Major League Baseball, and it's absolutely going to be a factor. Now, Julio Urias' police investigation is complete, and L.A. County's DA's office is reviewing it for charges. A few days ago, the Los Angeles Times wrote, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office has received a completed investigation from law enforcement for review, according to spokesperson Tiffany Blacknell, meaning the DA's office will now decide whether or not to charge the 27-year-old pitcher for what happened the night of September 3rd. Even if Urias is in charge, he could still face discipline from MLB, which is expected to interview Urias as part of its own investigation once legal proceedings are complete. During the extended investigation into this year's incident, which was handled by California Department of Public Safety officers, authorities sought out eyewitnesses and obtained cell phone video captured by a bystander of the alleged incident, according to a person with knowledge of the situation who is not authorized to speak publicly and requested anonymity. There is no timeline for the DA's office to decide on charges, according to Blacknell. Now, Julio Urias is expected to receive a lengthy suspension and will at the very least miss all of the 2024 season. 
So it's a truly sad and abrupt ending for a Dodgers pitcher that at one point was the top prospect in all of Major League Baseball that would go on to be a World Series postseason hero for the Dodgers that was truly emerging as an iconic player for the organization that will most likely never pitch for this organization ever again. And there's no guarantee that he'll pitch in Major League Baseball ever again. He would have set himself up for a big payday and would have been one of the highest paid pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. Now he awaits his fate from the commissioner's office to see if he'll get another opportunity again to pitch in Major League Baseball. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content and you really want to support the channel, hit that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.